high load, low velocity training, i.e. using heavy resistance exercises, can improve maximal dynamic and explosive strength. Dynamic strength is the ability to apply external force or the ability to move similar or greater loads at higher velocity. Whereas explosive strength is the ability to increase force as rapidly as possible during voluntary contractions from low or resting levels. The intended change in force following the use of high load, low velocity resistance training is a rightward shift in the force velocity relationship. Whereas low load, high velocity training, such as plyometrics and ballistic exercises, provide an effective stimulus for improving neuromuscular function in sport specific actions. Plyometrics are movements that involve a fast eccentric muscle action and muscle tendon stretch followed by a concentric shortening action. And ballistic exercises are where the resistance is accelerated throughout the entire movement, for example, bench throws or weightlifting derivatives. The intended change in velocity following the use of low load, high velocity training is an upward shift in the force velocity relationship. You could also adopt a mixed training approach where you combine heavier and lighter loads within the same session or across multiple sessions. By doing so can elicit positive external force and velocity expression, thereby enhancing the ability to express greater power. Shown by an upward and rightward shift in the force velocity relationship. This type of mixed training strategy is a form of complex training. The article published in the Sports Medicine Journal titled Within Session Exercise Sequencing During Programming for Complex Training by Patrick Cormier and colleagues provides us with programming recommendations for implementing complex training. This presentation brought to you by Talking Sports Science will be a summary of their recommendations on how to implement complex training into your own training sessions. Firstly, complex training is an umbrella term with four different ways of implementing. Complex training can be implemented by using contrast training, ascending training, descending training and French contrast training. We will now review the recommendations for each of these in turn. Number one, contrast training. Contrast training is a specific type of complex training that involves an exercise sequence with alternating a high load and low load slash higher velocity exercise in a set by set fashion within the same session. In terms of intensity and exercise selection, the higher load condition exercise could be performed using loads less than 85% of your one repetition maximum. An example exercise could be a back squat. For the subsequent low load high velocity exercise, depending on the exercise and individual capabilities, body mass and up to 60% of one repetition maximum can be used. An example exercise could be a counter movement jump. In terms of the recovery interval between the high load condition exercise and the low load higher velocity exercise, which is known as the intra contrast rest, recommendations differ between strength levels. For men and women, who can back squat approximately twice their body mass and bench press 1.35 times their body mass, an intra contrast rest of between 5 to 7 minutes is recommended for strong individuals. However, strong and experienced athletes can tolerate shorter intra contrast rest periods of less than 5 minutes. Whereas, for weaker individuals, an intra-contrast rest of 8 minutes and above is recommended to overcome the effects of fatigue. 
which may not be practical. For the interset rest, which is the recovery period between the contrast pairs, for example squat and counter movement jump, a period of three to four minutes is recommended. Moving on to ascending training. Ascending training is a type of complex training in which several sets of low load, higher velocity exercises are completed before several sets of high load exercises within the same session. In terms of the intensity, the intensity of the light load exercise can range between body mass and 60% of your one repetition maximum. Whereas the intensity of the heavy load is recommended to be greater than 85% of one repetition maximum. In terms of exercise selection, a counter movement jump could be prescribed for the light load exercise and a back squat above 85% of one repetition maximum could be prescribed for the heavy load exercise. In terms of the recovery, three to four minutes rest between sets is recommended. Moving on to descending training. Descending training is a type of complex training consisting of several sets of high load exercises completed before performing several sets of low load, high velocity exercises within the same session. The intensity of the heavy load is recommended to be greater than 85% of your one repetition maximum, which again could be a back squat for example. Whereas the intensity of the light load exercise can range between using body mass up to 60% of your one repetition maximum, which again could be a counter movement jump. In terms of recovery, between three to four minutes rest between sets is recommended. Moving on to the final type of training, French contrast training. French contrast training is a subset of contrast training in which a series of exercises is performed in a sequence within the same session. The sequence includes the following. One, a heavy compound exercise, which could be a back squat using loads between 80 to 90% of your one repetition maximum. Two, a plyometric exercise, which again could be a counter movement jump using body weight. Three, a light to moderate load compound exercise, such as a jump squat with a load between 30 to 40% of your body mass. This is to maximize movement speed. Four, a band assisted plyometric exercise such an assisted counter movement jump. In terms of the recovery, in between exercises, i.e. intra-contrast rest, 20 seconds rest is recommended. And between each series performed, four to five minutes of rest is recommended. And that concludes the four different complex training methods. It is important to note that many aspects of these training methods can be manipulated based on the individual needs and sporting demands. Ascending and descending training are recommended to develop appropriate levels of strength and training age before advancing to more advanced training strategies, such as contrast or French contrast training. However, due to the highly individual response to these methods of training, Practitioners programming complex training are recommended to experiment with their athletes to find optimal individualised rest periods and exercise intensities that work best for them. I recommend you check out the full text article. The link is in the description as it is a true belter. Thanks for listening folks. See you next time.